before I moved to Japan, I had no idea what I wanted in my life. I was planning on going to college, but I had no idea what major I was going to do, and I felt completely stuck. Of course, I had some hobbies like watching YouTube, playing video games, and listening to music, but I bet to most of you watching, those hobbies sound about as unique as breathing air or eating food. So basically, for all of my childhood, I felt completely pointless. I had YouTube as my dream job since I was seven, but unlike this guy, I never really had any unique skill to show to anybody. So time just passed as I saw the people around me do something they're willing to do for work, but I had nothing. Until the day I learned about this philosophy, I felt the same way for years. While I enjoyed making YouTube videos, there just wasn't anything about me that stood out enough for people to watch them. I just had this voice nagging me in the back of my head, telling me that I need to start working on something that will actually make me money. All of my friends were learning these skills that would eventually make them money, but I had nothing cut out for me, so all I had left was just easy, low-paying jobs that basically anybody could do. So I never really learned what it was like to enjoy the work I was doing. Even if I was helping people, I never really felt fulfilled. And I only saw the work I did as a conveyor belt to working a nine to five. And I could barely even tolerate being in school for eight hours a day. So honestly, I'd rather die before I work a nine to five. And I'm sure a couple of you have been in a similar situation. So that's why I wanted to share this one Japanese philosophy that changed everything for me. And this philosophy is called Ikigai. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with the concept, but I found there's actually more to it than the Western world seems to know. I first learned about it in my English class. I was doing a presentation about foreign exchange in Japan, and that's when my teacher brought it up to me for the first time. She mentioned how there's this mindset that they have where they're so absorbed in their work that they don't even feel the need to retire. And honestly, this completely shocked me because I'm used to the mindset in America where people just look forward to retiring. And that drive to work until the day you die is something you don't really seem to find in America. She then told me about Ikigai, which she told me translates to like the worth of living. She then went to her computer and pulled something up on the projector revealing. All right, so on this model is four circles that overlap each other, and this is what represents Ikigai. So what you have is what you love, what the world needs, what you can get paid for, and what you're good at. So in the overlap of each circle is a byproduct of two circles combined. So found between what you love and what the world needs is your mission. Between what the world needs and what you can be paid for is your vocation. Between what you can be paid for and what you're good at is your profession. And in between what you're good at and what you love is your passion. But in the middle of all four of these circles is where we find something that's called Ikigai. And Ikigai being in the middle is meant to represent that obviously it's the combination of all four of these concepts. But let's say you're somebody that's very empathetic. You love solving people's problems and you want to be a therapist. This is something that could be considered Ikigai. You can make a lot of money off of it and I need, I mean, the world needs it. I mean, if you look at these 95 year old Japanese sushi chefs, you can clearly see that they have something that they want to do every day that stops them from retiring. And I think they found the Ikigai. I mean, certainly when I'm 95, I don't think I'm going to be wanting to like work until I die. I'm going to want to retire. But when I heard myself say that out loud, that's when I first realized. I think my mindset is just completely wrong. So when I thought about that, I started thinking, what's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of Ikigai? And for me, it's honestly YouTube. I mean, it basically fulfills Ikigai. I love doing it. I can be paid for it, but I'm not very good at it. And does the world really need another YouTuber right now? I mean, it's different now that I'm not making Skylanders content on a 3DS camera, but do you guys really need my content? I mean, I'm replaceable in a heartbeat. My visa expires in a year, and soon enough, some cuter twink that can speak more Japanese and doesn't have social anxiety is just gonna do better than me. So honestly, when I see this chart, it's difficult for me to say honestly that YouTube is my guy. Every once in a while, I would see this chart, and every time I saw it, I would just be reminded that I seem to lack the same drive that the people around me have. And even if I enjoy doing YouTube now, Who's to say I will in like 10 years? But what if I told you that the concept of Ikigai actually goes much further than that chart? What if this chart isn't even what Ikigai is supposed to represent? Well, it's hard to say without knowing the full historical context. Ikigai goes back over 1,000 years in Japanese history, its earliest known origins being in Okinawa. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Okinawans also happen to be known as a group of people that have some of the longest life expenses in the world. Of course, the desire for meaning and purpose is something that goes back hundreds of thousand years in human history. But the history of Ikigai is the story of how people were able to take this purpose and manifest it properly. The Okinawans kind of coined this concept, and while you can certainly find similar concepts in Greek philosophy, like this word that I can't pronounce, Okinawans kind of have their own spin on it. So if this concept can make you not only want to retire, but help you live longer, then what exactly is it? Surely it's more than just a Venn diagram, right? Well, Ikigai is kind of impossible to translate into English. If you take it literally, it just means life worth. A better definition coined by a Japanese philosopher was that it's a feeling that one's life has value or meaning, because of the existence of a source or object. At the surface, Ikigai doesn't mean anything more than just finding something that gives your life just a little bit more value every day. So you may be thinking, okay, then why did you feel the need to bring up some Venn diagram that your English teacher taught you? Where the Okinawans just like one day sat at the little beaches drawing like four circles in the sand and then one day they just decided, I'm never retiring again. Well, what if I told you that the model that most of you are familiar with isn't even Ikigai at all? And that's because this chart was just invented in 2011 by some random Spanish dude named Andres Suzanaga. So yeah, this chart has nothing to do with Ikigai or even Japan at all, actually. Well, this chart is pretty cool, actually, and it has some life-changing applications for people. 
for me, I honestly think it ended up holding me back in life. Let me explain. By the time my English teacher showed me this chart, I was already planning on studying abroad in Japan, and I was hoping to do YouTube on the side while I was there. I felt like I wasn't going to be good at YouTube anytime soon, though. And even if I did end up being good, who's to say I would bring any meaning to the world at any point? And of course, I want to make more meaningful content. If you see my first video, it'll be very apparent, but I'm not very good yet. I basically just psyched myself out because of this chart, and it got me thinking. Well, if Japanese people are satisfied with their lives because of Ikigai, and I can't find my Ikigai with YouTube, then it must all be wrong. And it actually turned out it was. Ikigai is one of those words that will always have more meaning in Japanese than it ever will in English. It honestly wasn't until I started to understand its context in Japanese that I began to understand its real meaning. It's not a Venn diagram. It's not even anything related to work or income at all. Ikigai is really just the relationship between you and something else that you feel like devoting time to. It doesn't matter how much money your Ikigai makes. It doesn't matter if the world needs it. It doesn't matter if you're good at it. And it doesn't even matter if you love it at first. You can see Ikigai in little things like a cold glass of water at 3 a.m., taking care of your kids, or studying a language. And the most misunderstood thing about Ikigai, and honestly life in general, is it's not something you go out and find. The fact of the matter is, life doesn't come at you. It comes from you. Life without you doesn't even exist. And Ikigai is much the same way.